Hello YouTube, this is Jim again. Got an interesting project for you today. I'm going to take this log of sisu or Indian rosewood and I'm going to try and do a coring so I get two bowls out of the one blank. We'll see how it goes. So here I'm just marking center on both sides of the bowl and kind of get an idea of how big this thing's going to be. Initially I'm going to be turning between centers so I can get the wings right because this is going to be two live edge bowls from the same blank. So getting that right is pretty important so I'm trying to make sure the center is pretty accurate from the get go. Important safety tip, pounding on a spring-loaded live center doesn't work so good. So this project is going to work just like any other bowl turning. Uh, you carve the outside to get the basic shape and then you go to the inside. This is going to be a little different because I'm going to try and get two bowls out of the inside. So i um, trying to get the shape as nice as I can get it. And the blank is not that big, so I have to be kind of careful about how much I carve away. Otherwise, the inner bowl will be too small to be useful and difficult to core. As I get the bottom shape pretty much figured out, I'm starting to see that figure that I pointed out when I took the bark off where that small branch was coming off and there was some uh, curly figure in there and I was pretty excited to see this end up in the bottom of the bowls um, so I think that's going to be pretty so since the blank is not that thick I decided to go with a recess and I shaped the recess and the foot of the bowl right from the get-go so it uh, would be ready to go and finish when everything was all cored out and sanded and everything. This turned out to be a little bit of a mistake, as you'll see. Now this blank and pretty much all of my sisu blanks that I got from those two trees are almost free of cracks, which is really nice. Uh, different than the acacia blanks that I have that I harvested at almost the same time and uh, they seem to survive the drying pretty well but this is still a little bit wet so you can see after i finish the outside i'm sealing it so that it can give me extra time to do the coring and shaping of the inner bowl now that the outside is basically done I'm going to flip it around here and grab it in my chuck. And I'm going to turn a, another tenon on the top surface. And what that allow me to do is when I core out the middle, I'll have a bowl shape that has a tenon in it. And I can flip that around and grab it and hollow it out uh, and turn a foot on the bottom of the bowl, which will be completely round. So uh, it's a handy thing to make sure you don't end up having issues after you carve out the inner part. Here I'm setting up my coring jig from Woodcut Tools. I really like this one because it has tailstock support and uh, it's really easy to set up and you'll see kind of the jig that I have with the laser that makes aligning everything really nice. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you set this up. Uh, maximum stability is getting everything lined up with the axis of the lathe, but you can move things around 
uh, and cut shallower bowls like I'm trying to do here. And the tailstock really just helps make everything stay quite a bit more stable because the process is kind of rough. So this particular model from Woodcut comes with two knives, a smaller one and a bigger one for cutting various sizes of cores. This one is a small blank, so I'm going to switch to the smaller cutter. And I didn't think I had used it before, so I didn't check to see if it was sharp. And I think that may have been part of my problem in this process, which you'll see. Now the tricky part with all of these coring jigs is making sure that the bottom of your cut doesn't go too far towards the bottom of the outer blank. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up with a super thin spot on the bottom of your bowl. And ideally, you want to have an even wall thickness all the way down, particularly if you're coring things green. So here you see the laser that I'm using to align that. And there's a little tiny trick that I found to be really helpful. The little laser pointer that comes with this has a button on the side. So when you stick it in the hole of the jig, it kind of sits at an angle. So you have to rotate the pointer until the spot of the laser is right on the edge of the cutter, as you see here. Otherwise, your, your projected path is not going to be accurate. So as I start the cut, you have to go really, really slow because the cutter essentially is acting like a scraper and that's not the gentlest way to shear the fiber. So there, there's tremendous forces being generated at the tip of the cutter. And if you go too fast, you can have problems. So if your cutter is dull, foreshadowing, uh, you can have problems. Whoops. So even though I was going really slow, um, the cutter just got caught in the piece and just ripped it off. And the recess was just not strong enough to hold that thing against those kind of forces. The mistake I made was making the foot about the same depth as the recess. And uh, that just did not allow enough material there to make that connection strong. So it cracked. So now i got to start over and redo the bottom to create another way to hold it. As I get started here, I still wanted to use a recess, but I decided to just change the geometry a little bit and leave more material thinking Oh, that'll be strong enough. Should be fine. And unfortunately, it wasn't. But um, in the process, I also had to carve away quite a bit because the crack extended further than I thought. And I lost a bunch more height on the bowl. You can tell I'm kind of bummed about losing so much height on the bowl and that really pretty grain there from where that branch was. Oh, that's going to get carved away now and uh, pretty sad about it, honestly. Good 
So on second try here, I'm going super, super slow and you can see the shavings are just paper thin coming off of there because I'm trying not to take too big of a bite and get caught again. And this should have been a wake up call to me and my cutter was not sharp, but um, I was being dumb. As you might imagine, there were some choice words uttered during that last sequence that I uh, left out. And now I got to lose even more because the chunk that got pulled out from that recess uh, was even deeper than the previous one. And super frustrated at this point. I did actually try to sharpen the knife off camera here in the middle of that sequence and uh, it just didn't seem to do the job so off we go. So after all those failures and losing all that height, I took a look as you can see and the bowl was getting just too short for me to make a decent core so I decided just to bail out and do a single bowl live edge and uh, let's call it a day. After all the drama that I went through to get to this point, I was really happy with how the sanding went and looking forward to what the finish was going to look like. 400 grit surface was super smooth and the grain really looks nice. As I started hollowing, you can see the attempted coring process here, and uh, it was a little sad to see it go, but uh, it all turned out really nice in the end.
I always find the hollowing process very therapeutic. Just the way the wood carves away is just uh, very satisfying and soothing. So I was getting happier and happier as I get further to the bottom of the bowl and seeing how everything was taking shape. Here I'm just taking note of any rough patches or uh, high spots and low spots in the bottom there. Now that I've committed to this, I want to try and make this bowl as nice as it can be. And it's turning out really good. I skipped the sanding of the inside because most people skip that anyway, with the exception of Mike Holton's sanding montages. Check out his channel. It's really good. Uh, I don't have a good sanding montage like he does, so uh, skip right on here to the finishing. And as you can see, the grain is just absolutely amazing on this wood. After getting two coats of sanding sealer on, I decided to go with some abrasive paste and polishing paste, and uh, really just brings the level up, the finish up, and makes a really nice, shiny, smooth surface. You can see these leopard print sleeves on my arms. Those are to help me to avoid getting irritation from my skin condition and allergies. I get these from Farmer's Defense. I'm not sponsored by them, but I've got like five pair of them so I can swap them out every day. And uh, there'll be a link in my description if you want to check them out. But I find they're really nice to keep the small scratches and abrasions during turning.
I don't always show the sanding and finishing of the bottom of my bowls because it's usually pretty boring. But I had somebody ask a while back about how I got my brand on the bottom, so I thought I would show that this time. And as you can see, it doesn't always go perfectly, but uh, it does work most of the time as long as I've done a decent job of getting the bottom flat. If you've gotten this far, I really appreciate you watching. And if you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers to finally get monetized on YouTube. So any little bit helps. Thank you.